Oh, not my camera. Day five. Nothing. Get That's a lot of milk. It's like a root ball. Good morning. It is Thursday and I went to unhook my trailer last night when I got home and uh, then realized I had to hook it back up because I want to move those ewe lambs that I've had waiting patiently across the road until I had space in my barn here to bring them back over. But we have been met yet again with a monsoon. So, so far this week we've had kind of nice weather followed by a blizzard, followed by a little melt fest yesterday and now just like torrential rain. I know I don't have my seatbelt on. I'm just going across the road, relax. These guys have grown a lot, the black ones. So I'm a... Big mama. She's like, what have you done to me? So we have some uh, ewe lambs. These, this is from my September group that I ended up keeping. It was not in the plan. There's a couple billies. There's three black and white ones. No, two black and white ones, one complete black one. So they look good. I don't know when I'm gonna breed them. I'm either gonna wait and breed them naturally in October or attempt to breed them in July because there's not very many, but. I think I'm probably gonna wait. Day five, nothing. I uh, probably should have done this on the due date. She's not in active labor, she's chewing her cud. She's eating. She's doing all the things. What she's not doing is laying down and contracting and looking like she's at all interested in having a baby. Now her udder is pink and bloomed up. Her back end is pink and bloomed up. So everything nature is saying is ready to go. But according to the calendar, she's five days overdue. And every day this you keeps eating is getting put onto that lamb. And that means the exit strategy is going to get a bit tougher as every day goes on. So I'm going to give her a shot of dexamethasone here to induce this labor. Hopefully she'll go in the next 24 hours, but if she wasn't ready to go, inductions usually for me take about 50 hours. I think it's a single too, so it's going to be a monster, which is not great for her. morning. Well, we made it to day six and she did lamb overnight unassisted. You couldn't have waited a couple more hours when I was awake. Anyways, uh, the lamb got stuck apparently. It looks like it got stuck. Um, I'm gonna guess it's 6 30 now so I'm gonna guess it was born. It's really cold so I'm gonna guess it was born middle of the night sometime. Uh, and I'm gonna guess that the head and the leg w was out, but it took her too long to push the rest out because it was huge, which is the problem with being fed a high energy ration since uh, early March. We're into lady. 
she was overdue. So this is what can happen. Um, I'll show you the positioning of this and uh, kind of explain what I think happened. Sorry, Mama. All right, so this is what it looked like. This is completely kind of clean. It kind of matches the head, whereas this is still kind of enclosed in all the fluids. Now she might have just licked it too, but I'm going to guess the head and the leg was sticking out of mom kind of like this. So this would have been her like opening. And I'm guessing it was like this. And she just couldn't push it, couldn't push it all the way out. So it's pretty swollen. Stung tongue sticking out. I know. I'm sorry I failed you. I'm gonna let her out. She might just take one of those hands. It should be okay. You can go be a sister mom again. Oh, 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 look at this. No way. She is the best. She'll just take the ball. I think she'll just be fine. Once again, shearing day. So we uh, convinced Charlie to come back. I think there's 119 total. So he's just getting started nicely here. And uh, we're starting with our ewe lambs and working our way to the mature ewes here. Start with the squirmy ones first. Gloves, I, get, I get in trouble. You got it going? You yeah. get in trouble for what? Oh, people don't like it when I don't wear gloves. <laughs> and I don't want it going all over your stuff. It's not hard, it's just kind of... Do you think it got poked? Or do you think it's Caseus? Mm. Uh. I guess they've only had their... They haven't had their booster, right? Because they've only been... They've just had their ones when they were ewe lambs. But you'd think that was enough protection, isn't it? I don't know. This is the second one on the exact same spot. Could be just from rubbing on the feet. It, it could be. Right here. 
fight out for you. I think I got it. Don't cut me. Good? I'm good. I just don't want it on your stuff. Show everybody a spot. Spot? Wait, I just want to show the spot. That's so cool. Okay, good. Wow, what a day. I haven't even had lunch, so I am starving. Shearing is done. Charlie just left. Uh, we, I think we sheared 120. I thought there's 119. There's 120 ewes in about five and a half hours. So he did really, really well. Uh, we got four full bags of wool. I did ask Instagram if they had any questions. So I thought if they had questions, more than likely you guys will have questions in the comments which you can still put there but i thought maybe i would go through these and it might answer some of your questions a bunch of you want to know how his back is not in bits and i am not entirely sure i i don't know anything about sharing i'm totally ignorant to the craft and an art but i do know this is that it is that it is a craft and a skill and you have to really practice it. I think you have to be very um, aware of how they move and how they balance and position. From my naive eyes watching him, I think that's how he does it. A bunch of people wanted to know how he learned to shear and I believe Charlie was self-taught. How long has Charlie been doing this? He is just as good as Cammy when you are trying your hand at. When are you trying your hand at it, Sandy? Ooh, Sandy's not trying her hand at it. I know my skills and that is not it. <laughs> How long have I known Charlie? I have, we tried to do the math here and I think Charlie's been cheering for me since 2014. Um, so quite a few years. And then a lot of them are just like real technical questions on the combs and the cutters. You have to do a real quick demonstration. Okay, so when it's running, it shouldn't be too tight. You should be able to just sit it in your hand. Okay. And I'm running it too tight because it's not sharp. But it should be like that. It should be able to fill your hand over. Okay, one more. Okay, so those, you gotta have your cutter set so it's below the bevel. I don't know if you can see the bevel I on can there. see it, yep. Yeah, so mine's just below that bevel and then the bottom of the cutter can't be in those grooves. It has to be below there. So someone asked me, how do you sell your wool? I sell my wool because of you guys. Uh, otherwise, it would be sitting in a warehouse somewhere. So thanks to you guys, I work with a, a beautiful group of women in Eastern Ontario and uh, we've been collaborating and they have been creating just amazing wool products and yarn and dryer balls and lots of stuff. So that's how our wool is getting sold. So how often do we shear sheep? We shear a different group about every three months because there's a different group lambing every three months. So every group that is lambing gets sheared six weeks, six to eight weeks before they lamb. So every ewe, if they don't miss a conception, they will, they have the potential of being sheared every nine months. My ewes that got fed this morning are really angry because the rest of the girls just got fed and they think they need to get fed again. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Last night I was looking at those bags of wool and I'm like, I wonder if I should put them on a skid. Yeah. So at least it didn't get that far. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I just put a whole new bag in before I left. Yeah. Yes. That's a lot of milk. Don't drink the chocolate milk. Oh.
So you think it's roots or actually silt? We'll find out. I guess it's smooth. Sausage fest. Yep. Ready for the sausage fest. Ooh, that's roots. It's like a root ball. Just that one spot. Yeah. Does all that damage. I think so. I don't think it was horribly plugged. Looks pretty plugged. Just that little ball? Yeah, it seems to be unless it's plugged up further, but. Look at that. Oops, oh. sorry. Feels pretty plugged though. So no matter what cover crop we grow, that that can Actually, be what happens? Uh, I wonder if it wasn't the wheat roots. Wheat roots were plugged out. Really? Yeah. Well, and it was also really, really dry. Up right. Until the end of June. Right, so it was looking for water. Yeah. you guys what we're doing. Mark has been working on these fields for a while. Um, either our wheat roots or the cover crop roots or whatever. Um, we had such a dry summer, part of the summer last year, that what happens is if you have any faults in your tile or any tile that's too flat, the water will lay in the bottom of that tile a little bit. And if it's a real dry year, roots will dig and dig and dig until they find water. These ones are legit just roots from either our wheat that we had planted or the cover crops um, that we planted in the fall. My take is it's probably not the cover crops because they had a ton of rain that they didn't have to dig too far. I don't think the roots would have to go too far to find water. So sometimes you do the right thing uh, by planting these cover crops, but if you have any management sin, uh, on the wrong year it will definitely show up. So our tiling jobs are needing a little more improvement, which uh, that's what we've been doing over the last couple of years anyway. <laughs> Well, yesterday, because we were shearing, don't they look good? You guys look great. I didn't get a chance to process that you that had the stillborn lamb, and she will be my last one, and then my records are done. So I think uh, on the last video, I told you my results, and I think I said I had 296 lambs out of 117 ewes. Uh, I'm just gonna plug her information in here, and the unfortunate part is I'm gonna have to chase her to get a tag scan. Our last lamb in the session. 297 lambs. April 22nd. 
2022. Finished. can't believe it's already that time of year. I think this is the same thing that happened last year. I think my last lamb was born and then the day after we started putting uh, nitrogen on wheat. So Mark is taking advantage of this nice weekend. Our ground is barely fit, but uh, it's looking, we're looking at more rain and snow this week. So uh, we're gonna just take what we're given and start getting fertilizer on all our wheat ground. This is our first uh, official day out in the fields. The wheat here looks pretty darn amazing. It looks a little limey right now because it needs some nitrogen. It needs some fertilizer on it. But to be honest guys, all our wheat last fall looked dreadful. We got inches upon inches of rain in um, September and then again in October. It was just so so wet. So to see these fields, we drained this field a couple of years ago and wow it's already it's already paid for itself. This is the first time we've had wheat in this field in years because we, we've we never been able to get on here. Um, it's always been too wet. So it's exciting to see the investments that we're putting into our land uh, in the last couple of years are really starting to show in these uh, wet, wet years. So Mark's just at the start line here with the boom out on the sprayer. We also put in on fat tires. Are they called flotation tires? They're big fat tires. Um, and that's just to spread out spread the tire mark out so it's not like all compressed. There's a lot of weight, there's a lot of gallons of um, fertilizer in in the sprayer so I think it's just to spread out the weight on the land so it's not all just in two little tiny little strips. Another thing that we have done in the past, we haven't done it in a while, is actually plant, uh, not plant a couple spots called tram lines and you could uh, you could run your implements along that all season um, I don't know why he stopped doing that. I think maybe just we changed our drill last year. So he's just uh, calibrating the boom right now. Uh, purging it, I should say. Making sure everything's a go. So this is exciting. It's nice to be able to document this. I should really make Mark do it. 